Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, we're going to do a mix of a live and astrology and tarot today. I have been working with trying to get um, get everything sorted so I can do both. So now I'm using Zoom so I can shrink myself down and share with you birth charts. So I can shift this over to here and then start talking about your birth charts. How exciting! Yay! Okay, so this is just going to be a little half hour live. As I said, it's going to be a mix of tarot and astrology. So you can see here already... Hi Martina, welcome to my live. I'm very good, thank you for asking my lovely. How is everybody doing? So don't forget to double tap the screen, show some love, share the live. We are doing tarot and astrology. So let's let's start with a little um, message for the collective here. So I'm just going to move this zoom bar over here. Let me know, can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? I'm so excited. You'll see me looking to my right a lot. The image is mirrored as it always is on TikTok. Um, but yeah, I just want to know you can hear me, see me, and just interact, get engaged, get involved. We're going to do some astrology and we're going to do some tarot readings today. So let's see, can I pull myself down a little bit? Yeah, I kind of can, but then I do kind of lose. And I was hoping to get the... Thank you, Tay. I love your readings. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Okay, so we're going to do a daily... Not a daily, a general reading for the collective. First of all, we're going to just look at the tarot readings. And then we're going to move into um, some astrology readings. Oh, so excited! So let's see what's the general vibe, the general energy. Quickly, let me just show you the the chart for Monday, which is tomorrow, I do believe. I'm losing track of the days. But you can see here that we've got the new moon in Aries. So I'm just going to talk to you quickly about the new, new moon in Aries while I shuffle my cards. So new moon in Aries, basically... It represents new beginnings, okay? Aries is very much a fire as well as a cardinal fire sign. And you're going to perhaps feel a little bit more competitive. You're going to have more energy. Well, I hope we'll have more energy because I tell you what, I've been absolutely shattered recently. And I really need this new moon to, to kick me into feeling more energised for sure. Um... You'll also feel maybe a little bit, if, you, if you're being emotional, your emotions are going to be running higher because Aries is ruled by the planet Mars. The, Mars is the planet of um, aggression, war. It's all about movement. So you're definitely going to feel um, fired up and ready for whatever's thrown at you. Um... Yeah, so I'm looking forward to this new moon in Aries for sure. I'm hoping it's going to give me the energy that I need <laughs> and really feel like I need at the moment. So we'll come back to the tarot reading, uh, the astrology readings, uh, once we've done the message for the collective. So let's see what comes through for you. Let's see, we have daily message of guidance from Spirit, please. What does Spirit need us? to focus on right now. Well, Seven of Swords can represent self-imposter syndrome. It's a card of dishonesty, betrayal. So it's really important that you're honest with yourself and you trust in yourself, you believe in yourself. And yeah, just, just go after what it is that you want. Use this Aries new moon energy to really propel you into believing in yourself because if you've been if you started a project for example where you've been 
holding back because you've been feeling like you're not ready for it you haven't had the energy for it this new moon in Aries should bring the energy in to your passion and, and drive you in a way that's going to make you believe in yourself trust in yourself be honest with yourself I am good thank you for asking Amy how are you my lovely and here we go any difficulties that you've been experiencing or feeling then the six of swords is coming in and very much telling you that the difficult times are over you know you've been in some really rough waters and the six of swords is just reminding you that no matter how tough things get you know the only way here for you is up and, and forward towards something much more positive rest recuperation it's you know really important that you don't allow yourself to burn out because with the new moon in aries you know it's it's going to bring a lot of drive a lot of energy so you've got to look after yourself make sure that you rest as well as get things done okay what else does spirit want us to do and focus on well two of wands is the card of focus it's having the whole world in your hands basically and just going out there with a plan of action it's really important to plan if you've been planning something and you've been being feeling frustrated because you feel like you're getting nowhere fast then this new moon in aries is going to definitely give you the energy the drive the motivation the inspiration the energy to to drive this this forward and it's really important to plan because the whole world is in your hands here you know you've got a lot to offer a lot to give Hi to everyone just joining my live, welcome. Don't forget to double tap that screen. Christian, I can definitely resonate with this. Lots of challenges and feeling frustrated recently. Yeah, the new moon in Aries can also bring that feeling of frustration, especially when you're doing things and you feel like I'm putting all of my energy into this and I feel like I'm getting nowhere fast with it. But the new moon in Aries ast astrologically is bringing in a really powerful, bold, brave, brilliant energy. Um, but it can also make you a bit irritable because you need to be patient with it. Because whilst it's full of energy, full of positivity, full of good vibes, you still need to put the work and effort in. Okay, Aries are, is very much about putting yourself first. You know, making sure that you're prioritising yourself, thinking about what's important to me. What do I want to get from this situation? You know, you may have been working on a project that is slow and not been happening as quick as you want it to. But, you know, generally the new moon in Aries is, is certainly bringing in um, bold and positive energy. Aries, if you didn't know... Um, historically was the first month of the calendar year and then I, I can never remember the story offhand I will put a, a video on about it but it's really interesting that Aries used to be the first calendar month of the year and that's no surprise because the season the spring starts at a new beginning when seeds have been planted and you're nurturing everything and it's growing and the sun comes in and the healthy amount of rain usually comes in and um, very much makes the, well, nurtures and, and feeds the earth for the seeds to grow in, into life, into planets, into, into planets, into plants, into food. You've also got the, the tower card here as well. So, there's been some unexpected change here, something really difficult, something really unexpected, but you're dealing with it. But you've got to just be honest with yourself in what you want, you know, from, from this situation. You've got to think of yourself here, okay? You've got to, you've got to trust in yourself, believe in yourself, and know that you, with the self-imposter syndrome, you've got to get past it you've got to trust in yourself believe in yourself and know that you've got everything that you need i just feel like there's going to be this huge change this this 
unexpected change perhaps something that you're going to feel uncomfortable about but <laughs> you got the six of wands and that's coming in and telling me that you're going to be feeling a lot more happy more positive a reason to celebrate look at that she's celebrating she is arms in the air she has her wreath her wand that's in full flame there and it's just feeling like you know you've got an audience you're being recognized you're being recognized you're feeling the love you're feeling the power you're feeling like yes i've got this but you've got to be honest with yourself and uh you know make things happen mm. and you've got this the lovers as well this is gemini energy but this could be if you're working on a business partnership or you're in a relationship if things have been tough if things have been challenging things are going to come good for you the you know this is very much equal love it's deeply connect it's deeply connected um relationships with one person that is very special to you and there's a lot of reason to celebrate because something hasn't worked out the way that you wanted it to it's been hard okay it's been a tough time there's a lot of water gone under the bridge here but you've got to let go of what didn't happen and focus on what's left to happen you know it's there's no no forward movement when you're holding on to resentment and hurt king of wands is bringing in sagittarius energy here as well fire energy very much you are becoming this confident believing in yourself trusting in yourself you know you're carrying this wand here and you're celebrating and being recognized for your strength for your resilience could be leo and you're just feeling more confident more powerful so the new moon in aries is definitely bringing in uh, more positive energy for sure and healing with the temperance card so really nice energy for the collective really nice energy in fact okay so let's see what comes through we're going to do um, a reading now for the fire signs then we're going to do fire water earth and air so let me know what fire sign you are you aries leo sagittarius sun moon or rising and we'll see what comes through for fire signs what message of guidance do we have for our fire signs please Oh, two of wands again. So this is all about focus. Funnily enough, Aries this week, the new moon tomorrow is going into Aries. And this is all about planning and actually taking charge and moving forward with those pro projects that you've been working on. It's Cancer Sun, Sag Moon and Leo Rising. Okay. And then you have the Queen of Swords, which is just about setting boundaries. I always think of the Queen of Swords as being like a Gemini. Very sociable, thinks through her feelings and very much um, is able to set boundaries. So she can kind of smile at you <laughs> in a knowing way that if you say something to piss her off, you know, she'll come back with a very intelligent response to you. Rosie, hi, I'm Sagittarius. Okay, so we've got some fire signs here. So yeah, just planning, focusing, being organised in your thoughts, being rational, not letting the emotional uh, or the emotions take over and consume you. And then you have Cancer energy here with the chariot and things just moving forward really, really positively and quickly. Let me know if you're a fire sign, does that resonate? What are you going to do with that energy? Are you going to plan? Are you going to focus? Are you going to set your intentions in a way that's going to just make you thrive? Okay, let's see. Water signs next. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Let's see what spirit has for you to focus on. Judgment. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, water energy. This is your judgment day, okay? This is time for you to wake up, smell the roses. There is something calling for you here that you are... It's going to light you up, you know? Look how she's just oh, reconnecting with her soul, which is just beautiful. Temperance energy, Sagittarius here as well. 
this is definitely going to bring a sense of healing, self-healing, self-love, putting yourself first with that Aries new moon, just putting yourself first and really going after what it is that you want. That's your calling here. Doing what pleases you and not what pleases everybody else all of the time. It's important to prioritise yourself and put yourself first for once. There is something or someone you need to walk away from here. Something has become unfulfilling to you and you are needing now to really um, think long and hard about what you want in your future. Okay, I feel like you're going through some healing. There's a wake up call happening for you and it's bringing in healing. It's bringing in something new, a new beginning that's going to really lift your spirits and just make you feel so much better. So I'm just doing some general readings. So just on the fire signs and water signs. We're going to do earth signs next. So Capricorn, Taurus and Virgo. Hi Marius, how are you? Okay, I'm doing some tarot readings. And then I'll be doing some uh, earth chart readings hopefully. So uh, yeah, ooh. We are now on the earth signs. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Oh, earth signs. A lot of stress, a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety. This may be for more of the Virgos out there who are very self-critical and very much in their head. There could be some sleepless nights, some anxiety, some worry. But with the Nine of Swords, this is very much the thoughts in your head. And you can change your narrative and change the way that you're thinking about this situation to, to help you see clarity. So let's see what else comes through for you, Earth Signs. There's a choice you need to make here. This is an Earth Sign card, Two of Pentacles. You're weighing up your options here. There's something that you're worried about, something that you need. You know you need to change, but maybe there's a Taurus uh, stuck energy here where you're feeling like, I cannot move, I cannot make a decision, I cannot change the situation, and you're feeling stuck. Oh, I'm glad you're good, Marius. Yeah, lots to think about. Last night's reading was uh, quite a long reading, so I'm glad it's brought you some food for thought. And there we go. Earth signs, after long thought, deliberation, putting the worries aside, okay? You don't feel like you've got... you. I feel like Spirit is saying you're worrying over nothing, you're being self-critical, and you just need to embrace. Just make this choice. I feel like whatever this is that you're stuck in, you know, you're... You're holding yourself back, and but when you make that choice, boom. Time for victory, success, recognition, reward. Just really lovely energy. And last but certainly not least, the air signs. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Let's see what message of guidance comes through from the lovely spirit guides for my air signs. Okay, somebody's a little bit bored, somebody's a little bit fed up here, somebody is feeling like no matter what is offered to them, it's not enough, it's not fulfilling enough. There's a lot of set feeling of boredom here. Boredom, just, ugh, I can't be bothered, even if it's an amazing um, opportunity, it's just, it's just not enough. Queen of Cups. Maybe you're going through a little bit of uh, spiritual awakening here. Air signs are very much about communication and thought. And air signs tend to think through their feelings. But the Queen of Cups is saying, feel, go into your feelings. Allow yourself to feel. You don't have to think about why you're feeling a certain way. Go with the flow. Allow yourself to feel these feelings. And when you allow yourself to embrace these feelings... And not try and make sense of everything all of the time. You're going to feel a lot more enlightened. You're going to feel lighter. It's almost like you're adamant that you want to think, think this through. And you don't need to think this through. You just need to go with the flow. Go with the flow. Alrighty. One last card. Eight of Pentacles. You're working hard, but are you playing hard? You know, there's a lot going on in your mind. There's a lot you need to do to fulfill yourself both emotionally and mentally, okay? Emotions, I feel, are really important for you. Right now, you need to feel, allow yourself 
to feel your way through it and not just think your way through it. And I just feel like with time, I feel that like you've got the cycles coming here. Maybe this is the new moon in Aries coming in and giving you that energy, that boost that the Aries new moon brings of this new beginning, this new cycle that's going to really help you to find the energy and find the strength emotionally to push through and get the results you're trying to achieve because king of wands he knows what he wants and he damn well gets it okay there's no think overthinking things he's just a risk taker goes out there does what he wants when he wants and boom achieves great results so i hope that helps the air signs in here hi everyone just joining my live welcome we're doing tarot and astrology reading so Marius, talking to people to help others is part of my destiny, but I'm afraid to do this. You don't need to do it. I feel like people naturally gravitate to someone who will listen. Anyone who has a problem, anyone who wants to talk about issues they have, they will gravitate towards you naturally. There's not going to be any need for you to, to go out there and find people to talk to. They will come to you. Hi, Bex. Hi, everyone. Just joining my live. Welcome. Nice to see you here. While we are still quiet, I've been doing some tarot readings, but I am here to do some astrology readings and try to plug my other channel because I want to build my astrology and human design channel, which is called All Things Astro HD. So let me just pop in on the comments and if you can go over there and pop me a follow, I'd really appreciate it, please. All things, oops, all things Astro HD. So I can do these kind of lives then uh, on that channel as well. So there I am. Okay, so who would like a mini birth chart reading? This is just looking at your sun, moon, rising signs and just getting a little bit of, of a, a feel of what makes you tick? What when you're reading your horoscopes and why when you're reading your horoscopes you sometimes perhaps drawn to different um different star signs that you're reading for example i'm a capricorn sun taurus rising and i'm a gemini moon bex i'd love that sounds fab fantastic okay so if you pop your um day month and year of birth your city and country of birth and the exact time of your birth then we can get you a um, a little mini birth chart reading. So while I'm waiting for you to do that, let's put the cards away and let's just grab. I'm just going to change things up a little bit. There's going to be some movement on the screen a second. Maybe I will. Can I pause this? So what I'm going to do is just going to show you the um, the birth chart for tomorrow which is showing the uh, the new moon here in Aries. So for anyone who doesn't know anything about birth charts, this is a birth chart, okay? But this is a, a, a chart that's been generated for tomorrow because I want to show you the, the new moon in Aries. So anyone who's on my live late last night, I put this together just to, to show... Um, show what it looks like, basically, because a lot of people, I'm surprised don't know what a birth chart is, don't know what their big three are. So just knowing your big three, your sun, moon and rising signs can really, really help you to, to navigate through life and operate in life in a way that's going to help you understand yourself. I am, a, as I said, Capricorn sun, Taurus rising and um, Gemini moon. 
And in school, I always had school reports that said Lisa's very academic. However, Lisa lacks uh, the ability to concentrate for long. <laughs> well, that's my Gemini moon, because Gemini moons are very curious, love learning. But if not engaged and not kept interested, then, you know, there is... I'll just switch off and I'll, I'll be thinking about something else. Okay, let's see, who do we have offering their birth details? So I need time, I need um, day, month and year of birth, country, city and country of birth, and Amy Cockle, here we go. So let's do a chart for Amy. So let me just stop sharing this a second. Um, I am still here, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Okay. Let's get a chart created for Amy. So. Okay, so I'm just going to move this over here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, God, this is such a pain in the burn. I don't think we can. Nope, it's not moving over. Oh, there it is. There we go. So we've got... Amy Cockle. Cockle. Is that right? Yeah. Cockle with her. And Amy was born in Southampton, Hampshire, England. Hampshire. That's weird. Why isn't Hampshire coming up? Have I spelt it wrong? Hampshire, maybe Southampton. Let's try Southampton. God, Hampton. South. Hampton. There it is. I can't spell. There we go. So date of birth is... Um, Oh, thank you, Marius. Date of birth is 237, 2307, uh, 1994. And your time of birth was 204. 1404. So 94 makes you 29 this year. Is that right, Amy? 29 this year. Ugh, let me get rid of this one. Amy Cockle, where's she gone? Oh God, don't tell me I didn't save that. Alrighty. This is my first time using Zoom in this way, so do bear with me. Um, file. Recent Amy Cockle. Nope, it did not save it. Brr. Let's try again. Amy Cockle Southampton. There we go, Southampton.
and we're going under twenty third of the seventh twenty three oh seven nineteen ninety four at fourteen oh four Okay, okay, thank you very much. Let's move this over here. Oh, honest India, right, hang on a second. Let's move this over here. Ta -da! We got there in the end, hooray! Oh, only problem is it's not allowing me to share the bloody screen. There we go. All right, you can't see me, but you can see your chart, Amy. So, let's start looking at your chart. Can you see everything okay? In the top right-hand corner here, you can see... Hang on, let me just double-click this so it doesn't keep... That's fine. So, you can see that you're a Scorpio rising. So, this is your rising sign. You are an Aquarius moon which is down here, and you are a Leo sun. ta -da! In your 10th house. Interesting. So, have you ever seen your birth chart before, Amy? Or is this the first time you're seeing your birth chart? No, I'm using um, Zoom in a different way. I, I can't, um, I can I can use TikTok's um, app. Oh, I've had an invite to use TikTok's app to be able to share a screen on my video at the same time. However, you need a Windows PC for that and I don't have Windows. I have a Mac, very old MacBook Air. Let's see if I can do it. I'm going to try one more time and see if I can. No, it's not going to work. No. Never seen it. Okay, so um, in the, as I said here, this is a birth chart. In the middle here, we've got aspects. Okay, these are the relationships between the different planets in your chart, okay? We're not gonna be looking at aspects today, we're only gonna be looking at your sun, moon and rising and any other signs then that I feel, I guess, drawn to, connected to. The planet ruler, because your uh, Scorpio rising is Pluto. So I'd often look at where Pluto is and what house Pluto is in and um, how that can influence or the energy astrologically can influence you so let's take a look at your chart in more detail so this is a much more colorful um astrology software i think isn't it do you, do you agree marius i used my astro gold last night which is fantastic it's really easy to use um but it's very blah I'll show you now actually if I can share it. So this is my Astro Gold. Oh, you can't see it anyway. Nothing is sharing. Okay. All right, so let's get into your Sun, Moon and Rising signs, my lovely, and see how it resonates with you and how you can use your birth chart positions to help you, as I said, operate and navigate in life in a way that's gonna really be beneficial and helpful for you. So your rising sign in Pluto, what does that mean? Well, Scorpio rising, Scorpio is a fixed water sign. It rules the sexual organs. Um, its planet rulers are traditional Mars and then modern Pluto. I tend to look at both um, placements, planets, because I like to look at different angles on how how these planets can be um affecting you um <coughs> scorpio is probably the most intense sign of the zodiac and with your rising sign being in scorpio if you don't know already the rising sign is the mask you wear 
the first impression that you give to others when they first meet you and it's sometimes your appearance as well so how you appear uh, when you first meet somebody can certainly be um, scorpionic so the rising sign i also love to look at the moon the moon is all about your emotions it's your feelings it's the relationship you have with your mother or maternal figure in your life or how you are as a mother um if you have any children maybe even if you've got fur babies like i have then that's gonna um show you astrologically the energy of how you interact and, and are with your children so aspects we're not looking at planets we will look at sun moon rising and some of the others that um, i'm drawn to and then in the inner um, circle here you can see in the rim there there are numbers starting from one two three it might be small if you're looking at a small phone you've got four five six seven eight nine all the way around to twelve so your rising sign lives in your first house of the self as I said, this is the mask that you wear. It also decides what your your planet, your chart ruler is, and yours is Pluto. We we look into that a little bit more as well, okay? So as a Scorpio rising, then um, it's deep. There are lots of layers to Scorpio. A Scorpio can either be very private um, and have lots of deep layers where you are very reserved perhaps when you meet first meet someone and this this is the impression that you give to people so that you are very reserved and I feel like you've got a lot of inner self-confidence but you don't always show that confidence when you first meet people I feel like you tend to hold back a little bit um the rising sign of Scorpio, um, most of the Scorpios I know have got very dark brown eyes. Now, Scorpio, Taylor Swift is, I think, yeah, Taylor Swift's a Scorpio rising. So, Scorpio risings, you can either be very dark and sultry and appear very sexual, or you can have a very innocent look about you, but be very... Uh, and just have lots of deep layers about you. So are you someone, Amy, that is very deep, very private, very personal, and lots of layers to you that you don't really, you do have dark brown eyes, so that's very typical uh, Scorpio uh, physical appearance. Okay, looking at the planet ruler then of Pluto. So your Pluto lives in your first house as well, which is really interesting. So um, Pluto being in the first house um, gives you a, a real tremendous drive to transform yourself as you go through life. I feel that you are able to change your appearance change your looks do you change your hair and your fashion and your style quite often you're gonna have a very powerful personality as well so you may have lots of deep layers and you may be quite flirtatious and secretive and you're only you only reveal your feelings and your your true self to people who you really who you really get to know you know you're not someone you I I wouldn't be surprised if when people first meet you when they get to know you they say my god I thought you were really reserved bit of a flirt maybe <laughs> or they may just think of you very very quiet when they first meet you and then boom your Leo sun comes out in full bloom. <laughs> so I think first impressions are very quiet, very guarded until you get to know people and then your Leo sun definitely kicks in there for sure. Insecurity is quite common with the Scorpio rising. 
So I don't know if you are someone who, who has um, insecurities and perhaps, you know, you you tend to overcompensate and perhaps become a bit of a performer and quite showy in front of people um, when you get to know them a bit better because your insecurities are quite quite prominent. It's almost like if you feel awkward, you've got you've got to say something, you've got to do something, you've got to act in a way that's that's fun, it's playful, you know. Leo Sun is very playful. It's full of young life and, and young energy and it's it's just about having fun. It's a lot of um a lot of um I feel like people find you very attractive. There's something very charismatic about you. And I feel like with your um, Aquarius moon as well. This is there's something different about you. This is something different um, about you. Maybe you've got an unconventional home life. The fourth house represents um, your home life and the way that you are with people who you are friends with. Your friends are almost like your family. You treat your friends like your family. Your, your Friends treat you like family. There's a really unconventional um, way of life in, in the home. But with the Aquarius moon, you're going to be very socially minded. Um, and you're going to be an out of the box kind of thinker. You you definitely think outside of the box. You know you don't. Maybe you think differently and you behave differently to the rest of your family. I don't know if I'm allowed to say politically these days if it's correct to say, but you're the black sheep of the family kind of thing. There's something very different about you. Ah, I've just noticed as well. <laughs> You've got a f oh, oh, pretty much a full moon almost, born near the full moon in Aquarius as well. So there's definitely going to be a desire for, my gosh, independence. You crave independence. I don't know if you had uh, a home where you could be, you will completely be yourself, or whether there were restrictions in the home as a child where you just craved independence, a highly independent highly independent, very different way of thinking to um, to the rest of your family and friends as well. Definitely feeling that coming through for you. But you're very unique, very original in, in your way of thinking. You don't like showing your emotions. You would rather take the piss out of yourself and have and have make fun of yourself than actually be honest about how you feel. I cannot believe how much you're describing me on my life. Wow. So yeah, in a nutshell, Amy, unconventional, different, start appear to be standoffish, but there's a lot of layers to you. Um, and with your son in you know leo as well it just makes you just very playful very much the performer rather than be open it's almost like if you get hurt you you laugh through it in public but in the house in in private you'll be what i call myself because i don't like crying in public <laughs> call myself the closet the closet crier <laughs> so i won't cry in front of people and i don't feel like you're someone who cries in front of people. I feel like you're very personal. And um, yeah, let me know, are you very personal? Do you, do you cry in front of people or do you just have to think through why am I feeling like this? And what can I do to not feel like this anymore? With the Leo sun and, of course, the Aquarius moon being highly independent, some people may think you're, because you're so independent, they may see you as a little bit selfish. But, you know, you're not selfish because you are very much, 
deeply connected to your family and your home roots, but in an unconventional way. I'm like that when upset you see one person in public and in private, I'm completely different, yeah. I'm getting that. Is there anything you want to ask you about your birth chart? Is there anything standing out to you? Is there anything else you'd like to know? Do you have a question for the chart that we can have a look at? I haven't spoken about your son, have I? <laughs> your son is in Leo and it's in your 10th house. And the 10th house represents your public reputation. It's your career. And I don't know what you do in your... I'm blown away, to be honest. It's amazing, isn't it? I remember, you know, many years ago when I first read my birth chart, I was like, oh my God, it really resonated with my moon sign. I love the moon sign, the moon sign and the rising sign. Rising signs are your mask you wear, of your first impression of, you know, what people think about you when they first meet you, because that's the impression that you give. That's what you want people to see. So let's just quickly look at your sun, because I haven't covered your sun uh, in Leo. So Leo is a fixed sign. It's a fire sign, if you don't already know. It rules the heart and the spine. And... <laughs> You may not cry in public, but I feel like if you do cry in public, oh my God, it's it's dramatic. And I feel like um, you love to tell a story and you, are you good at public speaking? Are you very good at public speaking? As a Leo son as well, you're going to have a lot of energy. You're going to be very brave, courageous, honest as well, self-confident. So whilst the, the Scorpio rising is, is telling me that, um, you know, you're very standoffish when people um, first meet you, but generally, my God, when you get to know you, that's it. Amy's all, all go. Oh, hang on a second. Leo. You're going to be very proud, you're going to have a lot of integrity and you're going to be a natural leader and your challenge I guess is to kind of temper any arrogance or egotistical behaviour that you might have. You might not have this, you know, you might be perfectly easygoing but I don't think astrologically that's a true thing to say because of, of your placements here. Um, but you definitely radiate an abundance of energy when people get to know you. I don't know if anyone tells you that you've got like a resting bitch face maybe when you first meet someone, they don't know where they stand with you because you've got quite a serious face. Uh, but when they get to know you, again, just to reiterate, you're gonna be fun, playful, and allow yourself to have a bit more fun as well. Saturn in the fifth house here just makes me feel a little bit like you you kind of restrict yourself to having fun. Hi, Alina. We're doing birth chart readings. So I've got a couple of people on my list here already. Yes, they are free. Today they're free anyway. So I'm trying to get people to follow me over on my Astro HD um tiktok channel it is free it's free to follow people i'm not uh, charging i'm not asking for a subscription or anything like that so get on over follow me on astro hd i don't mean to i'm shy at first but once i know someone i'm very lovely yeah good good that's a lovely um Lovely trait. Okay, let me just get rid of that. Okay. Um, your son in the 10th house, 10th house of Korea. Um, I think you like the idea of being famous because <laughs> a lot of famous celebrities are Leo sons. 
Thank you so much. I had no idea you could tell all of this through birth chart. Not many people do, and I'm really surprised. I mean, I'm obsessed with tarot and astrology and human design. So I just think because I know, everybody else knows. You know, it's one of those things that you think, well, if I know, my everybody must know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm glad it's helped you. I just want to take a look at Mercury because I also love looking at Mercury. Your Mercury is in the ninth house of Cancer. Um, which is interesting. So all of this deep, these deep layers of yours, Amy, you know, it's, it's hard for you to express yourself. Um, it almost feels alien, it almost feels foreign to you to express yourself emotionally. But when you do express yourself emotionally, you're very good at articulating what you want to say because you think through your feelings here, especially with that Aquarius moon. So you almost think to the point of being able to explain how you're feeling to be able to find um, to find a resolve, which is bloody great. Bloody great. With Mercury and Cancer as well, I don't know if you are very intuitive or you have um, psychic downloads, but I just feel like you've got a, a very strong um, connection to your higher self. So you're very, very intuitive. The reason I asked, you are, tw are you 29 this year, Amy? Because you're, you're going through your Saturn return If you are, and your Saturn return is a big, a big deal. You're 29 in July, yeah. So I don't know if you know what a Saturn return is, but basically your Saturn return is when Saturn goes around your chart. It takes about 28 to 30 years to do this, and it goes back to its sign. Uh, and for you, Pisces in the fifth house, which is really interesting. So I don't know if... Um, You've, you've been struggling to connect with your inner self. And this is why I'm saying with Mercury and Cancer, when you do finally connect, I think when you hit 30, so once you finish your Saturn return, you'll, be, you'll take life a lot more light, lightly. I feel like at times you take life very seriously, but you're going to hit 30. You're going to come out of your Saturn return and just have this really playful, much lighter look on life. It's almost like you're quite hard on yourself and you set yourself a lot of goals. And, you know, you just need to be kinder to yourself. And expressing yourself then is really important, um, especially when you get these psychic or intuitive downloads. It's important that you find the right words to express them um, in that rational manner. But yeah, just don't be so hard on yourself. But you're definitely going to be able to deepen uh, your concentration levels. I feel like, you know, yeah, ask a question away. Ask away. Um, I'm just doing some free mini readings. They're meant to be mini readings, but they're going on longer than they should. I've literally got 10 minutes left, so I can... Um... You said earlier part can tell about my relationship with my mother and me as a mother. Yeah, so the... Okay, so the 10th house or the 4th house could represent the maternal or paternal figure. 
your moon sign in Aquarius, Aquarius being um, very independent, very unconventional. Your relationship with your mother may be very different to perhaps your friends and family, other family members. I just feel like the Aquarius moon is just, it's just a very highly independent, a little bit rebellious, um, humanitarian energy. So you may, you may have had a very unconventional, sometimes what might have felt like um, lacking in love, almost like the, the love was there, but it just, because Aquarius is just so free-spirited, so free-willed, it almost feels very unconventional. So I don't know if you had an unconventional, um, sensitive, different kind of a relationship with your mum. Or you have a very unconventional, liberating relationship with your children. You know, there's, there's no sense of feeling restricted. It's just different. So does that make sense? You do, you do what, Ing? Do you have like a different unconventional relationship with your mum and your kids? The Aquarius moon just... Because you think through your feelings rather than allow yourself to feel your feelings, it's really important that you allow yourself to feel your feelings. You have a very unconventional relationship with your mum. I just don't have kids, just wondering how I'll be as a mum. Well, as a, as a mum, you can learn a lesson from how your mum has been. But I do feel like, you know, with your children, which is your fifth house, with Saturn in there, you will be, I don't know, was your mum a little bit free-spirited? Did she just let you do what you wanted to do? And maybe you will set more boundaries and you will be more restricted or restrictive with them. I don't know. It's in Pisces and Pisces is very empathetic. It's very intuitive. You're going to have a very strong telepathic connection with your children. Or you could do but mum it was a very hard childhood there was love there but it was hard for so many reasons well I'm sorry you've had a difficult relationship with your mum my lovely um but yeah it's just it's it's kind of written there isn't it that there's there's the um Aquarius energy very much is appears to just not show love because you think differently very much in your head so i hope that helps you obviously there's other planets and i also pull up asteroids as well uh, that i love looking at so hopefully just looking at that small part of your chart i mean there's all of this all of the aspects, all of the other signs that we need to look at as well to get a full story. Um, I'm not offering full readings at the moment, but you know when I'm when I open my readings up again, um, I shall let everybody know. So yes, thank you for sharing your chart. Let's just move this back over to you. Why won't I move? God, this is doing my head in. Right. Move the hem back over there. Close it down. Okay, so next up we are gonna have hey voila. When you are I'd love to pop. Oh brilliant okay. Okay, I'm just going to take a little break from the birth chart readings and just do some tarot readings. Who would like a tarot reading? Let's see. Anyone got a question for the cards? A 
Okay, so ask your question. Name and your question, please. What's your name and question? Name and question, please. Becky, what is coming up in love? Okay. Becky, what's coming up in love for Becky? What's coming up in love for Becky? Well, Queen of Pentacles, she's very contented. Earth energy, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. This is very much telling me that you're going, look how contented you look. What's coming up in love for you is learning to love you. Feeling stable and happy in your own skin. Getting your life into balance. Getting your finances into balance. And just learning to chill out and go with the flow. So I don't know if you're in a relationship or you've recently been affected by a relationship where things haven't turned out the way that you wanted them to. But things are changing and things are changing for the better but you know the change starts within you here really starting to connect with with you love you respect you and um just feel connected to you again i feel like when i see a tree i always feel like it's going back to your roots and it almost feels like the roots are coming out of her head here and i feel like you need to connect with your roots go back to the start put the past behind you wherever this has been and um, learn to embrace and heal. Sagittarius energy coming through here as well. Boundaries are really important for you. If you haven't set boundaries in the past, it's important that you learn to set these boundaries. And then, not only have you got Queen of Pentacles, yeah, separated from 10 months on and he cheated on me a lot. Here you are, learning to love yourself again reconnecting with who you are learning to love yourself again i appreciate all of the wonderful wonderful things about you because you've got so many amazing things about you you've got every reason to be confident in yourself she queen of wands oh so fun so confident so in tune with what she wants and desires and goes to get it there's no point in worrying or thinking about the past anymore it's it's done learn from it okay heal from it you've got the sagittarius temperance energy there three of swords as you learning to grow evolve and move on from the past because when you realize and accept that what you went through it was horrible but you've learned when you learn from it and you realize that was that that one person that's not everyone you're going to meet then you're going to have this sense of clarity and release from feeling like, oh my God, I'm never going to meet someone. To finally be in your queen of wands. Where are just feeling like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the six of wands has also just fallen off, uh, off the bottom of the deck there as well. So sense of clarity and acceptance. Letting go of the past is coming through first. And it may feel like a long time ago. Ten months. But I don't feel like you fully healed from that past experience and it's definitely time to move on so bear with me one second because i'm going to need to stop sharing and start anew So sending you lots of love, light and positivity. You know, it's it's hard when you've been in a relationship with someone and I am I feel happy on my own but scared I'll never find anyone I can trust. Be nice to know if I can. You will. You will. If you work on yourself and you learn to appreciate everything about yourself, love yourself, nurture yourself, that and just feel confident, then you're going to attract what you put out there. So if you're putting out this energy of, I love myself, I'm good enough, I am everything and more, then you're going to be attracting that back in. So let go of the um, anxiety, let go of the 
trying to control, meeting someone who you can trust. Trust will come with the love and friendship and the bond that you'll build, that you're manifesting. So what you put out, you bring back in. You've got the magician card here saying, manifest what's important to you, what's priority to you. What do you want in a relationship? You know, what are you hoping to achieve? What do you want to add value to your life? Do you want someone who's fun, obviously loyal, committed, faithful? Put those intentions out and you will attract those attentions back in. Okay. So I hope that helps you, my lovely. Who else do we have? Wow, Maggie is in full growl. There's a little dog outside barking. She's having it. You're welcome, Bex. Pratchy, will Matthew prioritise our relationship or his offer with Rome? Oh, that's a big question. Will Matthew prioritise our relationship over his offer from Rome? I can hear you. Yes, I can. Will Matthew prioritise his relationship over his offer from Rome? Ooh, okay, so this card's just flipped out of the deck here. King of Wands, he's gonna he's gonna do what he wants to do, okay? I don't feel like it would be fair of you to ask it him or give him an ultimatum i feel like he wants to do what he wants to do and what he needs to do because that's his destiny king of wands is very much can be a bit selfish can be very much like i said if if they want something they'll, they'll go after it that doesn't mean that he doesn't love you or that you're not a priority in fact if this opportunity i feel in in rome is going to bring in um, more stability and finance for the two of you. So I think you need to go into yourself here and really think long and hard about what this move would mean to you if he does take that offer in Rome. But will he prioritise your relationship over the offer from Rome? Stay hopeful. I feel like if he does, whatever his decision is... I feel it's very optimistic. I feel it's written in the stars, literally. And I feel like it's going to be a really good opportunity opportunity for the both of you. If he takes it, if he doesn't take it, it's, it's, it's bringing optimism, hope, faith, healing. It's a start. It's a yes. And if he does take it, you're going to be faced with a choice to make here, to stay or go. But the Eight of Cups is about walking away from something or someone, but there's still love here. So I feel like Spirit wants you to really think long and hard. Oh, look, you got the Ace of Cups at the base of the deck here as well. Yeah, why wouldn't he be? If he's had an offer in Rome for something that's going to light him up and bring financial reward and success. That, that, that's no, you know, reflection on how he feels about you or prioritises you. I mean, my husband at the moment, he's going through the same thing. He is looking for a position that might mean he's going to have to travel. I joke and he said, oh, well, we'll get you a little Airbnb. <laughs> and he's like, what are you trying to get rid of me? No, no. <laughs> and I don't know where you live, Prachi. Um, but I just feel like there's... There's going to be a choice for you to make, okay, to stay or go. But I feel like he will, he will take the role. But it's it's no slight on how he feels about you. You live in New Zealand, so it's a big move to go from New Zealand to Rome. I mean, Rome is amazing. Have you been there? Have you been there? It's amazing. If you can go with him, then go with him. Go with him. 
oh, well, if he's only going to further his studies, then what, is that going to be a year, maybe? Is that one year? Oh, you have four kids with him or with somebody else? Not sure. So, oh, you haven't asked him. Have you not been with him very long? Is this quite a new relationship? So is it quite a new relationship? You're not married, okay, that's fine. 18 months, fairly new. Fairly new, but long enough that if he does go, then... You know, there is a chance you will either walk away from him or you'll hold on. I feel like this... I don't feel like this a walking away from it. So he's he's told you about it. He I feel like for him it's really important that he he does this because whatever that he's going to study, it's going to enhance and improve his chances for for something that's going to bring him more success in the future. So yeah, I feel like he will he will take the the position in Rome but I feel like he's he's pretty emotionally mature anyway he said that I have the offer but I may not be going mm, okay well he may not be going okay he may not be going is he lying to you let's see is he lying to you come up on the base of the deck again if you feel like he's um hi Carrie welcome if you feel like he's lying to you then you've got the ace of cups here there's a, an opportunity for something new for you that feels much more emotionally fulfilling three of swords here I I think he's gonna he's gonna take the Rome offer if he's if it comes through he's gonna go and I can't help but feel, oh my God, <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. I feel like he will go. If if he's offered it, he's going to go. You're going to be hurt, but you're going to move on. You know what? Life goes on. The Wheel of Fortune is coming in and saying, if he goes, yeah, you'll be upset. You're not going to break your heart because I don't feel that your heart is in it to be broken. I feel like you've got something new and, and things happen for a reason, you know? So I feel that if he goes, you're going to meet somebody new anyway, and you will be hurt. But if he doesn't go, if he, if he does stay, I don't know. Are you going to work out anyway? Or are you going to reignite your love and, and have this new beginning? Or is there someone new? Life does not stop. You are absolutely right there. I'm glad you completely agree. So I hope that helps you, my lovely. Sending you lots of love, light and positivity. Yeah, absolutely. I will be opening them up. I haven't really been in the right frame of mind. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me or knows or seen my, me on lives recently, I lost my, my beautiful nephew in December and it's been hard you know it's he was only 20 love him and you know we're heartbroken and I'm I feel like any time I do a live or I do videos it's like ugh, it's still quite hard and um funnily enough my brother gave me this which was Nick's 
uh, using into crystals, lucid dreaming. He loved um, spirituality. He followed my tarot channel. Oh, thank you. It, it's awful. It really is so awful. Um, but as you said, life, as hard as it sounds, life goes on and we have to just keep going. You know, this breakups are hard. Death is hard, but life goes on and we have to roll with the punches. We have to take each day as it comes. Thank you so much, Prachi and Kelly. Thank you. Bloody horrible. Ugh, it's choking me up now. So I'm not going to talk about that. We're going to move on. <laughs> We're going to do some more readings. So let's see. Who else has a question for the cards? Sue, general. Hi, Sue. Let's get you a general reading. Let's take a look at Carrie without even doing a reading for you, my lovely. Life always gets easier, but you've got to take some accountability and ownership to make your life easier. If you've heard me on my lives in the past or even on some of my other videos, I'll always encourage you to start thinking positively. It's really important to know that what you put out, you get back in. Okay, so if you're allowing all the knocks to keep you down, then you're going to continue being down. But if you use those knocks and those challenges that really push you back and hold you back, even if you're down to the last penny, dime, cent, whatever in your purse, there's always going to be someone or something coming in to replenish. As long as you keep that positive focus and that positive vibe, there's always a way out. Always a way out, okay? So I hope that gives you a little bit of hope but yeah life can always get better but you've got to put the work in it you know you can't just sit there and think oh nothing's happening and wait for everything to happen for you you've got to take responsibility and ownership and i'm not saying that you're not but if you, if you're doing a little bit each day you're doing a lot okay um uh, sue so let's take a look at your recent past your current energy and your ooh, recent past so i don't know if you are connected with someone through love through business through a relationship here or you've met someone who is like a soulmate to you so where are we currently very deep emotional connection here have you Thank you. We've had a lot of bad news regarding this new family. That's horrible, Sue. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Carrie. The only thing we can do is, as I said just now, with losing my nephew, we've just got to just keep putting one foot in front of the other and take each day as it comes and be there and support those loved ones who need us. Even though we are needed, we can be there for each other. I'm sending you so much love. I have a partner. Are you very deeply connected? Do you like read each other's minds if you're having a conversation? You'd be like, oh my God, I was just thinking that. And then they'll say it. You're welcome, my lovely. Is there something in particular, Sue, that you want to know about? Yeah. Is there something on your mind? Because so far, relationships, emotions, intuition, it's coming through strong here for you. Is there something on your mind? Are you holding on to something here? Some negative energy, some negative belief system that you need to let go of? Nurture yourself, care for yourself. Time for reflection. Because you, you're about to start something new, a new chapter in your life here. There's a new world, a new beginning. There's something big, a big change coming. Have you got something big, a big change coming in your life? There's something amazing about to happen. Something amazing is about to happen. But you're just worried about it. Yes, negative. 
So what are you negative about? What are you worried about? What are you concerned about? And how can you change that negativity? Obviously, things like terminal illness, we can't do anything about physically, but emotionally we can be there for loved ones. Um, but yeah, there's, there's nothing but good vibes in your energy. And you're like, oh my God, everything is shit. And it's not. <laughs> You've got everything good. Love this reading for myself. It's lovely. Amazing. So forward thinking in a much more positive way, okay? Forward thinking. You're waiting for something to happen here. Life in general, love and family. I just feel like there's lots of good stuff coming. You're going through maybe a change, a transformation. Something's changed within you. But I feel like you're going to start to think, do you know what? I'm going to listen to what Spirit said to Lisa in my read and I'm going to and uh, embrace life. Stop the negativity. Stop the worrying. Nurture myself. Love myself. Care for myself. Let go of the negative thoughts and embrace life because this is nothing but good news. Big changes. And it is hard to, to not allow the negative thoughts to consume you when you're going through a difficult time because your your feelings take over but you've got to let your mind control your feelings our brain is really powerful and if your brain is telling you something negative then you're going to convince yourself it's negative if you're telling your brain this is amazing oh my god i got a big change coming some exciting news coming something good is coming Think about what would be good for you. What would be good news? What would you describe as being good news to you? And put that intention out there and it'll come back to you tenfold. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Good. And I try and get rid of negative. Wonderful. Okay, I am going to need to log off now because I am getting tired. I've been here for, I think, probably an hour and a half. Ooh, look, there's your card again. <laughs> And I'm really tired. I need to go and have some food. I need to walk my dog and then go pick my lovely husband up from the train station. So I will say good night. God bless. Sending you lots of love, light and positivity. And um, yeah, be sure to follow me and head on over to all things Astro HD as well. And give me some love over there. So gonna leave you with my beautiful screensaver which is the lion isn't he gorgeous look how beautiful he is oh absolutely love it